Hey everyone, this week I want to show you an example of a cross-site scripting attack. And just before I show you, just remember that you should only try this kind of stuff when testing apps you own or have permission to test and always hack responsibly. So let's take a look. Cross-site scripting occurs when an attacker is able to inject some malicious code into an otherwise normal HTML page. So I'm just going to show you an example here. I've got an app the basic JavaScript and HTML front end. As you can see here, I've got a little function that renders some links. And I also have a form here that I can use to submit URLs to post to this page. So let's say I wanted to post Hacker News. Then I can just put the link in there, put the name in there, click Submit Link. And there is my Hacker News link. So I can go there if I wanted to. Great. All right. And that's stored in a backend. As you can see, here is our request that gets our links. So that's pretty cool. But there is a vulnerability in this code. And again, before I show you that, just remember, only try this kind of stuff with websites you own or have permission to test. So. What's really the problem here? The problem is I can post a link, right? And I'm actually putting that link directly into the HTML right here with using my JavaScript code. So that way, instead of just writing a link, let's say I want to execute some code. Instead, I can just type this and maybe let's write an alert saying, you've been hacked. Of course, this alert could be, instead of this alert, I could write some kind of script that does all kind of terrible things to whoever's running that code. And I'm gonna name that one uh, evil link. So if I submit that link, I click on it. Well, there you go. It's executing that code right there that I just wrote. So really anyone that logs onto this page is now gonna be able to click on this link and run my malicious code that I've just posted as a normal user of this website. So that's pretty bad. So that's just one of the ways that people can inject code if you don't have your security in order into your, uh, your HTML. So let's take a look. How can we really prevent this? So the first step is to be aware of that possibility. So that's, you're watching this video right now, that's already a good first step. The second thing you can do is validate the user input. So if someone is writing here, this kind of JavaScript notation, and then their malicious code, you know, what we can do is already on the front end side, we can write some code to make sure that whatever they're entering here is actually a valid URL to a normal website and not this kind of malicious input. And then what we can also do is validate that request we're sending to the front, the, the backend, and again, validate that inside the backend before we do anything with it. And the third thing, which is really going to also make it very hard for attackers to do this, is to sanitize your HTML when you're directly working with HTML. So I'm going to write another comment here for whoever has to work on this sanitize your HTML. So how can we do that? Well, there's lots of libraries out there that have been verified and uh, tested that you can use, and that's gonna clean and your HTML and not gonna allow anyone to put anything like that in there. So finally, what you can also do is use a CSP or a content security policy header. And that CSP header is gonna be used uh, to control the types of resources that your user can load on your web page. So that way, at least if there is some kind of cross-site scripting going on, then you're not gonna be able to load anything outside of the scope that you've defined as an administrator. So that's just a quick little intro to cross-site scripting. That's one of the most common vulnerabilities in web apps. So I hope that helps. Remember, this is purely informational and educational. Don't misuse this information. Hopefully uh, that helps you guys to build some uh, safe web apps.
and look forward to seeing you in the next one.